To the waves. We must row in these waters. Sing, my ravens. You sail! Catch the wind! It was a man called Kjortve the Cruel that brought me to these rain-soaked shores. You all know the name. Of that, I am certain. He and my father, Rongvald, had some disagreements. But my father was never one to bow his head and keep silent. Kjotve's men came for him when I was out hunting. I was not there to defend him. And then when my brother, Gurim, also fell, I, like a coward, fled to England. I swore that in time I would return to avenge my father's death. But I waited too long. Upon my return from Frankia, I heard the news. Kjotve the Cruel is long dead. Slain by the hand of Eivor. The wolf kissed one. I am glad my father's killer is dead. But gods, I wish I had been there to swing the axe myself. Monastery! Bound to be rich picking! Let's hear a story. I was saw a Dane in Gautland boil bear meat for his supper. Can you believe that? He boiled it! Disgusting! We were stuck in a cave in the mountains, hiding from a snowstorm. Bear was meant for the village, but we had first pickings. But Solve, local oaf, he just ripped the flank off the bear and tossed it into a pot bent for vegetables. Left it there for an afternoon. Now, if you boil anything that long, it ends up tasting like leather. Flavorless. With fish, deer, horse, it does not matter. To bring out the flavors, you must prepare the meat. Not just butcher and toss it into a pot with yesterday's sludge. I have a recipe for bear. You coat it with honey and there. scrape it with salt before roasting over on a spit. Nothing better. When this oaf served up his boiled bear, another man, Nyan, he sliced his piece down the center and wore it for a show. Ha! You see, I there are a few things here. in life that can be both luxury and need. I prefer not to squander the meat on my spit. Did I tell you about the time I pretended to be a ghost? Did I tell you about the time I pretended to be... All right, back to the story. Did I tell you about the time Set I pretended out. to be a ghost? I am no stranger to the company of others' wives. Drop them off! There was one beautiful friend, married to an old blind Alwyn. <laughs> I could not resist her. So when oh, he fell asleep, on. ale at him by the fire. She let me visit her most private chambers. She was a jerk songbird. But I was a praying buck, rousing the dead in my ecstasy. At the moment of glory, the old man burst in on us, waving his crop. He struck me on the arse and I gave a yelp. Who's there? He cried. But my girl was quick of wit and knew her husband well. She convinced old blind Alwyn it was not a man in a room, but his prize goat escaped from its pen. He dragged me by the hair, down on all fours to the barn, where he told his back. Now. I spent the night lying in straw and shit. Still, the best night of my life. <laughs> You Salskjals got a story. Unar the Ugly was an excellent sailor who could pilot a longship entirely on his own. And this is why King Sigvaldi kept him around. In all other matters, Unar was a cruel, anxious, and humorless man. He was one of the most unlikable people you I have, have ever known. Here, one year, I recall we had invited some carls from the Ingling clan to dine with us. As we were serving ale, we came to find that we had none left. It so happened that the ale had run out just before reaching Unar's horn. This raised in him a word storm, and he accused Sigvaldi of treachery. Every man in the longhouse cheered up Unar for raising such a fuss. This made Unar angrier than before, and he stormed out. 
Short time. time. We heard him yelling through the door of the hall. I set this scorn pole upon the men of England for their dishonor. We looked outside and saw that Una had severed one of the heads of the England's horses and stuck it upon a hazel branch. When he saw us gathering at the door, the England Carls among us, Una panicked and ran. He was not seen for many months. <laughs> Estrid spoke often of the teachings of Christ. I found them cold and strange, hidden in word tangles of a sacred tongue. The common folk do not even know the language they worship in. They listen, but do not understand. Despite that, it has captured many Norse minds. Often I wonder why. We Norse Look dream there. of doom, Enemy and no, we cannot avoid it. Those who do not die in battle face eternity in cold hell. But the Christian God gives hope. Even the poor and meek will find paradise. He welcomes all, if they only worship him. Has Christ captured you? Estrid asked me once as we lay together in bed. But Christ is a God of peace, ill-suited to my nature. Odin is my guiding right, light. We can Thunder. continue later. Where were you? But Christ is a god of peace, ill-suited to my nature. Odin is my guiding light. He, at least, is never boring. Who'll share a tale? Here's a tale to tickle your sides. Winter before, I was drinking in Stavanger with some companions. With us in the Mead Hall were men of Bard Jarl's clan, one of which was a poet named Halli, called Sarcastic Halli by most. Seven ale horns into his night, Halli stood upon his table and called across the room to another man, a scald named Chudolf. Chudolf! he yelled. I can compose a more beautiful poem with my belching than you could with your tongue and fine words. The room laughed, Shudolf loudest of all. I accept your challenge, sarcastic Halle, he shouted. Allow me to begin. Shudolf then spoke this verse. Sad Halle drowns in horns of hubris, squeaking like a stoat. Yet proudly the pup calls it poetry. The room laughed again, with Holly joining in. Then, Holly tripped across the room and opened his mouth to speak his verse. From his throat erupted a jet of vomit into Trudolf's face. His only composition that night, of which he seemed most proud. My favorite part of any battle is the moment before it. Everyone has their ritual in that flutter of anticipation, our hearts race. Zoma would visit the children of the camp, recount an old myth like a wise skald. She filled those little ones with courage. She knew they deserved the a chance to fight in great battles. One day, and if he did not win, Run up they would not have their chance. Once I followed her on this ritual and watched her speak. Tearing up the dark elves in search of the need of poetry. Those little eyes, the children's faces, a flame, enamored. I saw myself as one of them. I felt so much better. Soma has that way with people. She has that way with me. She need only tell us to you and the war is all they want. Let's hear a story. Some years ago, I took to sea with a sword dancer called A. You lot have not fought a full campaign under Harpdan's banner, I would wager. Let me tell you what it was like. Rarely was there a song of swords when Harpdan set forth. Smart Saxons saluted. Here, Brave were butchered. Soon, his reputation reached the hinterlands, well before the man himself arrived. And Saxons awaited Mas him. Not steel. 
Halfdan's march through England was unstoppable. Everyone bows to a king until his back is turned. Even glorious kings who have not known treason will do so in time. Halfdan had to ensure that what was his would Say remain so. Luke. One by one, I saw him entrust the city or the village to his old loyal followers. Until it came to me. Until his anger. I accepted my charge. There are those who bemoan not being able to fight and die on the field. Halfdan needed us alive. He knew the better younger fighters should remain at his side, while his wizened Drengel served as his eyes across these lands. Let the sail out! A good shack story should liven our spirit. Drop the sail! Good shack stories are surely... Hold on. Save it for later.